It's time for that scary video now where we talk about pretty much everything that can go wrong. Though there are countless things that can go wrong when you're growing cannabis, I think it's really important not to get too hung up on this stuff and be too much of like a helicopter mom because it'll take a lot of the fun out of growing. It's also worth noting that pretty much every grower has some of these problems at one point or another, so don't be too hard on yourself. It's not your fault. This shit just happens. If you recognize one of the symptoms we talk about in this video in your plants, then just follow the Grow Weed Easy link in the description for their problem section. It has much more detail and would probably be like four hours by itself if put into video form. The first of the ailments we're going to talk about is nutrient problems. The most common of which is a nitrogen deficiency, which makes your plants exhibit yellowing in the leaves. Though this is normal in mature plants during the second half of flower, if it's happening closer to the beginning of your grow, it would be helpful to add some extra high nitrogen fertilizer in your next feeding. On the flip side, general nutrient toxicity is indicated by nutrient burn, which is a drying and browning that starts at the tips of the leaves and works its way in. Diagnosing pest problems is particularly difficult because so many of the bugs that peeve us are microscopic and need at least a jeweler's loop to identify. Luckily, most of these pests can be dealt with by preventatively spraying pesticides. I would just say that only spray these pesticides during veg, because if you spray them on your buds, they won't go away and you're gonna be smoking poison, which is fucking gross. I like to use this solo pump sprayer for applying the pesticides, but we'll also talk about some alternatives to spraying later on in the video. If you think you're having a pest problem, one of my favorite ways to track it is by hanging up these little yellow traps. That way you can get a rough guess at how bad the infestation is by seeing how many new bugs land on the trap every day. My biggest tip with pests is to get preventative. I do preventative sprays of spinosode soap and neem oil during veg, usually just one application of each spaced out about a week. And so far that has prevented any major infestation from occurring because these two products are effective against most cannabis pests. If I could only pick one of these, it would absolutely be the neem oil. Just beware that most neem oil needs an emulsifying agent, aka some soap, to dissolve in water before you spray it. So mix it according to the directions on the bottle, add your soap, and use your sprayer to thoroughly coat first your soil, then the underside of the leaves, then the tops of your leaves. Also make sure to not let any pets or children near your plants after they have been recently sprayed, and wash your hands and arms after working with them. This can be some nasty stuff. Also, don't overspray because it can burn your leaves pretty bad. One of the first pests new growers find themselves up against are fungus gnats. These start growing when the soil stays too wet for too long. My favorite way of treating these is BT bacteria, which you get from mosquito bits, which are sold at pretty much any hardware store. These inoculate your soil with a beneficial bacterial culture that literally eats fungus gnat larvae making it impossible for them to reproduce. Just sprinkle it over the top of your soil before a watering and you should be all set. I use this stuff preventatively at every transplanting, but if that's not enough and you do notice these bugs flying around, I would definitely water a little less frequently because they do thrive in the moist soil. Mites are another common issue, but much harder to identify and treat. They come in two common varieties broad or russet mites, and spider mites. The late stages of both of these infestations have really strong visual cues, but hopefully you'll identify it before it gets too bad. Spider mites weave literal webs around your leaves and buds, which just looks super gross. And in the early stages, they can be taken care of with spinosotal soap. Russet mites cause the leaves to blister and contort, and can typically be prevented with neem sprays. Aphids and thrips are two very similar looking pests, much larger than mites, and the fully mature ones are visible even with the naked eye. They're both treatable with spinosotal soap and neem oil, among other products. Here you can see some severe thrip damage on a few of these plants while they completely avoid others. 
How to remildew, or PM for short, is another common problem. It isn't a big deal if you find and deal with it early, but it can be catastrophic if dealt with too late. This fungus flourishes in high humidity and poor airflow. Humidity is directly related to temperature and colder air stores less water. When the temperatures go down, the water that is stored in the warmer air condenses and precipitates out of the air. This is where the mold causing moisture usually comes from, which lingers if you don't have adequate airflow compounding the problem. Make sure that your nighttime temperatures aren't too low, as long as it's above 65 degrees Fahrenheit, that's cool in my book. And make sure to be running a dehumidifier if your day or night humidity is above 70% relative humidity. As far as airflow, I keep some little fans blasting the top of my soil and the top of my canopy at all times. Green Cleaner is also a decent spray-on remedy to check out, but I would 100% avoid Eagle 20. That shit is poison. I have friends that swear by using beneficial insects and predatory mites because it's much safer and cleaner than spraying, albeit a little bit more expensive. Ladybugs are probably the most common and are available at pretty much any grow shop. Assassin flies seem particularly interesting to me and I'm excited to make a video dedicated to these once I have a chance to experiment with them myself. To summarize, most of these problems can be avoided by paying attention to your plant's changes when feeding and making adjustments accordingly, preventative light spraying of neem oil during veg, and maintaining an environment with stable temperature and humidity as well as good airflow. If you think you're having a problem in your garden, take a deep breath, and then go check out Grow Weed Easy's awesome plant diagnosis site where you can plug in your symptoms, see pictures and remedies. It just makes the whole process way easier. If you're still at a loss, take some good pictures and head down to your local hydro shop. The folks there are always happy to help with stuff like that. Oh, that's the end of the spooky shit for now. So stay tuned for the next video. And we're going to talk about when is a good time to flip your plants over into flowering.